All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first main event of the night. This is the GNC2 class. We started with 38 riders. We've narrowed it down to the fastest 18 riders on the pole. Ladies and gentlemen, from Warren, Oregon, our points leader. He's riding the Parkinson Brothers Racing Honda, number 67M, Dashin Davis Fisher. Starting second from Warrington, Pennsylvania, on the KTM 450. From Bromley Brothers KTM, number 54A, Dan Bromley. Starting third from Pine Grove, Pennsylvania, the Bird Hills Chopper Yamaha YZ450, the 14A, Dalton Gautier. Starting fourth from Aurora, Indiana, the Mike Butler Racing Honda, number 24J, Brandon Wilhelm. Fifth starter on the front row from Modesto, California, the Pacific Tub and Tile Honda, number 54Z, Michael Enderbitson. And our last rider on the front row from Salinas, California, the Rod Lake Racing RGR Honda, the 30Z, Bronson Bauman. Row number two looks like this. The 27, you will have the first pick on the second row. He comes to us from Barrington, New Hampshire, on the Roy Built Moose Racing Honda. 27U is Jameson Miner. Eight starting pick from Bucyrus, Ohio. Another Parkinson Brothers Racing entry. He's also on a Honda, the 24F, J.R. Addison. Starting ninth, he's won a couple times this year, looking for a win here on the 450 from Norco, California, the Southland Racing g, &G Racing Honda 44E, Nick Armstrong. Starting 10th from Albion, New York, on the Fat Guys Racing Honda, it's the 94B, Flying Ryan Wells. Starting 11th, he's got one victory on the twin. He comes to us from Chesterfield, Virginia, the Rod Ayers Motorsports Honda, the 16S, Tristan Avery. Last rider on the second row from Hoisington, Kansas, the TNR Racing Harley Davidson of Salina entry, but he's riding a Honda in this one, the 31G, that is Dylan Bell. Now we go all the way back to row number three from Modesto, California, the Pacific, Co Pacific Coast Pools Honda, 23Z, James Monaco. Starting 14th, former points leader, also the Daytona Flat Track winner from Salinas, California, the Kennedy Racing, Rod Lake Racing Honda, the 11Z, Andrew Luker. Up next is the Flying Tomato from Canandaigua, New York, on a KTM, doing it for KC Cycle Helmet World. It's the 36B, Colby Carlisle. Starting 16th from Rio Vista, California, the Southland Racing Amero Farms Honda, the 12Y, John Vanderlane. We'll argue about the last name later. Starting 17th from Holly, New York, on the RLJ Elder Trucking Honda, number 19B, Justin Jones. And your last rider making the main event in his first attempt, his first start as a pro rider on the Grand National Circuit from Gap, Pennsylvania, the Scott Power Sports Honda 99A. That is Kyle McGrain. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your starting lineup for the GNC2 main event. And now let's go trackside with our pole sitter. Danny? All right, thanks, you guys. I have an excited Davis Fisher who also said he was a little nervous. You're the current points leader, pole sitter. Is there a strategy to take the win here tonight? I mean, we're sitting in a good position right now, so uh, hopefully just get the whole shot, and uh, we'll see where it goes then. Uh, just got to stay consistent and uh, roll my own race. All right, good luck to you. I'm going to step on over to our second guy, Dan Bromley. You've had a great, great night so far. What is it going to take to put Davis Fisher one step off the podium? Uh, what to do is um, get a good start and run consistent laps. I know uh, this is a long race, and uh, the man that's going to be on top is going to be the most consistent. All right, Scotty and Chris, back to you guys. All right, so that was words from the first two riders. Both of them have picked the very outside. Are you surprised at that? Davis Fisher takes the very outside, and Dan Bromley starts right beside him. Chris? I'm not surprised at all. It, uh, closer to the outside, it allows you to... You know, the race line is up the racetrack. It allows you to kind of get that momentum. With the 450cc motorcycles, they need a little bit more time to get all the way up to speed. They accelerate quick, but they got to get them on the power band and get them moving. And I just heard that Rice Honda Suzuki KTM, Wade Rice, is adding $500 to the first rider across the line in the GNC2 class on one of those brands. So. Don Rice uh, was a friend of my grandparents, actually had the Rice Honda out here, and now Wade Rice is putting up $500 extra dollars for the first rider across the finish line on one of those brands that are available at Rice Honda. That's pretty nice of them to do, and nice of uh, Terry Reimer from Black Hills Harley-Davidson to add the money to the riders. And, uh, that, 
give them a, give that, them a, that's a, a lot heads of money up. for these GNC2 riders. Well, you know, I think the winner of this class uh, gets uh, about a thousand bucks. Right. Another, you know, that's a five, you know, fifty percent increase. Increase, yeah, just for just for a local sponsor, you know, sponsored well, by a local you, shop. You know, it's uh, these guys are out here uh, from long ways from home, and not a whole lot of riders from South Dakota in this final. Uh, zero. Zero riders. Uh, so everybody here's got a lot of expenses. Uh, you know, we see uh, kids from New York in this race, uh, Washington State, Pennsylvania, um, California, um, having that extra money to get home is uh, a big bonus. Our poll setters from out there on the West Coast from Oregon, Warren, Oregon, is Davis Fisher. He'll be on the outside. He's going to be one to keep our eyes on. It's time for our first main event. This is GNC2 main event. 18 riders, 16 laps around this Black Hills Speedway half mile. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Main event number one on the grid. Six riders on each row, three rows of six. It is main event time here in Rapid City. And the light turns green from the middle. It's Dalton Gauthier getting out there in a pretty good fashion. He's got some company from the inside. Yeah, he whole shot his heat race, getting good starts. That's what he needs. Uh, see if he can get the momentum going. That Fisher up around the outside, going down the back straightaway in about the third or fourth spot. As they headed off in there, uh, Michael and Enderbitz in, uh, up the inside. And then uh, Gauthier going back around the outside. On the he Yamaha. takes the lead. Gauthier, the only Yamaha out there in this one, leads him into turn number one. Here comes the 54 of Enderbitz, and he's got company on his right shoulder. It's 18 riders on the racetrack all at once, the most riders we've had on the track in one race tonight. It's Gauthier. Here comes Fisher now taking over second. He's bringing with him the 94B of Ryan Wells up to third. Good run up front there for uh, Dalton Gauthier. It's the best we've seen him all year long. He's been kind of knocking on the door, running on the podium. Here he is trying to streak away here early um, after the end of lap two of 16. It is still Gauthier. He's getting a little bit sideways. Davis Fisher keeping his wheels more in line, and he's already tracked down the leader. He's going to look for the pass down the back straight away. Here he comes up the inside. New leader, 67M, dashing Davis Fisher. Let's see if uh, Gauthier can get that get that momentum rolling up around the outside. Gets back. You know, there's a little patch of brown dirt up there. Got a little bit of grip in it. Gauthier's These guys are chasing it down in one and two. Down, coming off a of turn four is a little patch that gives him a lot of grip coming off the corner. Gauthier, he's faster in three and four. Fisher looks like he's faster through one and two and down the back straight away. Fisher goes to the high side. Gauthier is trying to block the low line, take it away from him. Look at Fisher, makes a move. He's way up the racetrack. Here comes Bromley. Bromley up the inside, takes over the second position as they, uh, they both uh, compress the suspension pretty hard coming off at turn four. But what I see here is I see a lot of guys made some gearing changes. I think they got caught off a little bit, uh, caught off guard how fast the racetrack was in the heat race. We saw a dominating uh, Davis Fisher get away from the 14A. It looks like somebody changed your gearing and changed your attitude. We got a new racetrack and tonight. The track's a little bit slower than it was in the heat race. It's a 23.069 was the last lap from the leader, so it's a little bit slower. Not a whole lot as our second place rider slips wide once again, and Bromley slides back into second. All this behind Dalton Gote, the 14A. He also just made the move up to the pro ranks at the start of the season. Yeah, and he could he could benefit from a, a good tight race here between Davis Fisher and Bromley. Uh, we saw Fisher go down, try out the bottom, loses a lot of time, losing a lot of momentum. Uh, comes under uh, attack from Ryan Wells. But I like that he did that. I like him looking and searching for a faster line. That's not, you know, sitting, somebody sitting back and following or not trying something new. So it did cost him, but he's got to try something. Now Ryan Wells is right there looking for that third spot away from Davis Fisher. So it's Gautier, Bromley, Fisher, Wells, Bronson Bauman, Brandon Wilhelm, Vanderland, Kobe Carlisle, Jamison Miner, Justin Jones rounds out your top ten so far. It's a pretty racy racetrack. You know, these guys are running way wider than they were in the heat race on both ends of the racetrack. Uh, very racy track as things starting to tighten up up front. We got Four. two Pennsylvania riders and we saw Davis Fisher get in there uh, into back into the second spot. He's reasserted him, his position toward the front and uh, see if he has anything for Gautier here. Halfway flags are out, four riders battling for the lead. It's still Gautier, Bromley, Fisher, Wells, your top four, and then a, a gap back to the next four riders. Yeah, Fisher out front, see if he can streak away like he did in the heat race. You know, he uh, built up a quick little gap here of about three bike links immediately. I think he's found his rhythm, found his line, says this is where I want to run. As we see Gautier come under uh, attack from the 54A of Bromley, the Pennsylvania guys going side by side, allowing the kid from Oregon to take off. Yep, and there is Gautier now slides back to third. Now Ryan Wells puts his sights on Gautier. He goes up the inside, so Wells comes up, takes over the third spot. Gautier 
is good at the start of all of his races, needs to put a full race together, and he slips back to the four spot right now. Let's see if he can regroup and uh, make a, make a, a, a re-bid for the, for the podium. Nine laps in the books. We're only going 16 in this one. GNC2 main event up next to 25 lap Grand National Main coming up in just a moment. Fisher dominating now. Picks up where he left off in his heat race, running some good laps in the high 22 second bracket. Not quite as quick as he went in his heat race, but he's, but he's consistent. He's getting away here with five to go. He's going to let the rest of them settle, uh, settle off the, the, the bottom two spots of the podium as uh, we have uh, Ryan Wells up the inside, takes, uh, takes nice over the, the second spot from Bromley as uh, Gautier starts to fade back a little bit and come under the clutches of Colby Carlisle. Nice move by Wells to come up there from deep in the field. He's taking it all the way up to second. He passed Bromley, but all this is letting that Davis Fisher check out. Davis looking for a second win of the season. Now Bromley repays the favor, comes up the inside. Wells squares it off. He's going to try to come back underneath him. Doesn't quite make it happen. Yeah, we got to uh, tip our hat to Colby Carlisle winning the LCQ, and now he finds himself up in the top five. He certainly learned something riding the racetrack in the semi. Uh, made, uh, made a couple more adjustments. He's moving forward. Great racing, but as Fisher has checked out, now we got about seven riders battling for second on back. Fisher's got this one in the bag. Anybody's race from there on back, man, is Bronson now is at the tail end of this big group for second through about seven. Yeah, we saw uh, Wells and, uh, and, and Bromley there trading positions, trading that second spot a couple times the last lap Look, or so. i got to point this out. Colby Carlisle, who came from the third row, is now up to the four spot. He wants to get on the podium with two laps left. What a ride by the Flying Tomato. Great ride from young kid from New York. Uh, we see a lot of Eastern riders uh, watching that kid from out west uh, march off in the distance. We've got a Pennsylvania New Yorkers here battling Did for the last spot here on the podium. Carlisle went in high, dropped off low like they were doing at DuCoin almost. So he's trying some different lines. White flag is out. There's your leader. Now second is Wells. Third is Bromley. Fourth is Carlisle. Is right there. The KTMs. There's two of them on the racetrack there. Nose to tail for third and fourth place. Bromley takes a look for second place off of turn number two. Looks like Gets he's got the drive run. and makes the pass. Now slides Wells back to third. Looks like Carlisle's going to try to follow suit. Not quite making the pass going in the corner. Fisher off of turn number four is going to take well, Bromley take spins the it win. up a little bit, but keeps the momentum going. Good Fisher, run. Fisher takes the win. Fisher takes the win. We'll get the rest of the field run down in just a second as it was exciting across the finish line. Solid finish there for Dan Bromley. He held on to the second position. And uh, Ryan wheeling. Wells in third. Uh, a couple stand-up wheelies by these young riders. Uh, great performance by our championship point leader. Extends the points lead. Uh, Fisher. Uh, All right. Your Brom Bromley moves up a little bit with uh, Armstrong <laughs> down the, the. The right number plate is falling off the 67M of Dash and Davis Fisher. He doesn't care. So Davis Fisher taking the win. Nick Armstrong came up a little bit short there at the end. Second spot, the 54A, Dan Bromley. Third is the 94B, Ryan Wells. Colby Carlisle, a hell of a ride coming from the third row up to fourth. Brandon Wilhelm will get that fifth spot. Vander Land is what we're hearing is the sixth spot. Dalton Gauthier, early leader, drops all the way back to seventh, Chris. Dal Bronson Bauman, eighth. Jameson Minor, ninth. Tristan Avery, tenth. J.R. Addison, eleventh. Justin Jones, Dylan Bell, Kyle McGrain, fourteenth in his first pro ride. James Monaco, Ender Bitson, who was up front at the early lead, two. Andrew Luker, seventeenth. Nick Armstrong is in the eighteenth spot. There's your victory lap. And it's going to be Davis Fisher taking somebody for a ride. I didn't see if that was his dad, Rex. I can't see it from here. Looks like it is. But, uh, uh, what I, had, a ride. I had called Michael Enderbitson at the front earlier, and it was the 54A of Dan Bromley up okay. front from the very beginning. So well, uh, we had my mistake Ender there. Enderbitson was on the front row, so I think, he, I think he was up there too for a few moments. So I believe that is Rex Fisher. Uh, you might have seen him race here before. He used to be national number 12 and uh, yeah. did make it out here I've periodically. I raced, I raced with Rex for many years back in the 80s and the 90s. Especially so, uh, out west at Castle Rock and... I remember seeing him at Peoria quite a bit, watching him as growing up, and Good I remember TT watching rider. him here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching his son Davis at uh, the Peoria TT uh, coming up in about 12 days. Uh, coming from a TT part of the world, I, I think it's uh, going to be interesting to watch him get around there. Bromley goes real good there as well, and they're starting to, you know, Bromley had a good day here. Armstrong and uh, Miner struggling a little bit. Um, Minor back in ninth. Uh, looks like Bromley's going to probably take over the second position in points. They're both really good TT riders. It's going to be, uh, be a fun race in Peoria in two weeks. Davis Fisher definitely enjoying that victory lap right now as he stops by the rest of the crew. And he'll 
head up to that uh, Dunlop victory podium. I saw some Dunlop tires up there on that victory podium, and he'll go up there and meet up there with second and third place again. Dan Bromley comes home second, Ryan Wells third. Water truck's coming back out, so we're we going to miss it just a little bit, and we'll talk to these riders, the top three, all going to the interview right now. What a race. Fantastic job. I mean, Fisher, you know, made some mistakes early on and uh, kind of fell back a little bit. Did a great job regrouping, reestablishing his rhythm, found the line that he wanted to run, and exploited it to its fullest. And I believe let's, we're about ready to go trackside to the Dunlop Victory Podium here at Black Hills. Hardly half mile at the Grand National here in Rapid City. 75th annual Sturgis Rally. Let's go trackside with Danny Medine. She's caught up to our Victory Podium finishers. Danny? Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Black Hill Speedway, make some noise for AMA Pro GNC2 class. I think they like that. Davis Fisher, you are on fire. Take us through that race. Uh, man, I, got, I didn't get a decent start, and I uh, came off, and uh, just trying to find the line that I was running in the heat race, finally found it, and uh, didn't see anyone else since. You're maintaining the current points in the GNC2 class. You have a great team behind you. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, I can't thank the Parkinson's Brothers enough, Bob Lanfears, Beaverton Honda, Dan Wall Racing, Team 95, Allied Motors, uh, my mom and dad, everyone that came out, and uh, Shank Racing, The Fox, and uh, everyone else that I forgot. What do you think of this crowd? It's awesome. It's awesome to see, all, see everyone out here. Thanks to Terry Reimer for putting this race on. You guys, make some noise one more time for a GNC2 winner. I'm going to step on over to Dan Bromley. You're kind of getting pretty comfortable up here on the podium. Take us through that battle with Ryan. Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm starting to like it up here, but uh, that was the funnest race I've ever had. You know, me and Ryan were going back and forth the whole time, touching each other. We might have, you know, reached over and grabbed each other once or twice, having fun, but uh, I uh, couldn't be happier being back up here, second weekend in a row, second place. I'm happy. You have a great team behind you. Who would you like to thank? Oh, yeah, I can't thank my parents enough for all they give me and all they do. Um, Bromley Suzuki, KTM North America, America uh, Steve Bromley, uh, Throttle and Speedco, Triple J Racing, Motoil, Saddleman, Motorcycle Superstore, and Bell for these awesome helmets. And uh, everybody I forgot, my family back home, everybody watching, uh, I can't thank you enough. Please make some noise for Dan Bromley. Now, Ryan Wells, you were last up here, I do believe, at Lima. You're back up on the podium. You have to be pretty happy with third place, and you had a great battle with Dan. Yeah, you know, I, was gonna, I knew it was going to be a tough race. I mean, second row, so I had quite a bit of ground to make up, but I had a good race with Dan. I got an awesome start, so at first I thought I was going to be able to hang with Davis and uh, try to hang with him and give him a race for the win, but, yeah, that didn't happen, so... I gotta give a big thanks to Fat Guys Racing though. Without him, I wouldn't even have had a bike to race this race today. Um, my mom and dad, everybody at home for getting my bikes ready at home. Newman Motorsports, Tyler Butts helped me walk my bike out because I came out here by myself. Colby Carlisle and his dad for letting me stay with them this weekend. So it was a good race and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make some noise one more time for our up and comers, our GNC2 class. Scotty and Chris, GNC1 is up next. Take it away. Thanks a lot, Danny. Congratulations. Davis Fisher picking up the second win of the season, and he's going to extend his points lead just a little bit. And Dan Bromley, second finish in a row for second place. And Ryan Wells, a nice charge all the way through the pack. And so those actually, the, the trophies, the Dunlop trophies, are actually a tire that has a trophy built into the inside. So that's the trophies. They're going to do some victory celebrating down there on the victory podium. Coming up next is our 25-lap GNC1 main event, which is the Harley-Davidson GNC1 class presented by... Vance and Hines. All right. Look at those trophies. Look, they're huge. That's, that's pretty cool. I wonder if they were gonna if they're gonna unmount the center part and use those tires later in the year. Uh, if they may have to. I mean, we got a long season. We're just halfway <laughs> through. So Wells, uh, he's that's something it up like that. Head. I'd want to put that on my wall. That's pretty cool. You have to have a really strong nail. <laughs> 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 and they better hit a stud. That's for sure too. Uh, you know. That that's cool. I haven't seen a trophy like this before. Uh, kudos to Dunlop for coming up with a unique unique way to award these riders. Yeah, awesome. So uh, Terry Reimer is doing it right up here at the Sturgis Rally. It's the 75th Sturgis Rally and races. And again, there's one race left. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate everybody. Appreciate their patience when we had that oil slick and we had that one uh, 
get off earlier. So coming up next, the 25 lap Grand National Main Event. Uh, you gonna pick any winners, or are you sticking with your? I'm your, sticking your, with your number, number two, two, Kenny Coolbeth. I mean, the guy's been impressive all day long. He's, uh, you know, wins the dash, wins his heat, looking wins for the, the clean sweep. Fast time and qualifying has been fast all day. Looking for the clean, clean sweep. But, I, um, but like, like you mentioned earlier, we saw the, in the dash for cash the the rotor is glowing red early. We'll see if they've got brakes or if the rotor can withstand that uh, you know glowing red heat for 25 laps. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that they're going to be able to get away with that. There's going to be some effect on that for those guys that are riding the brakes pretty hard throughout the course of the the main event. But they've also done a lot of work on them. I know the Zanotti Racing Team has put a lot of time and effort into having a, a quality brake system for Coolbeth. Having worked with those guys uh, a year ago, I know they s spent a lot of time uh, cr uh, creating a braking system that will go the distance for their riders. So uh, we'll find that out. But uh, it appears that this is the most abuse the br rear brakes have seen all year long. We'll see if it's going to work to their advantage.